Hey guys, it's me. So today I'm going to be talking about how to survive Thanksgiving. For those of you that don't know, make sure to click the link below to get my full story about my eating disorder, my entire journey going through it. Now, currently, I'm eating intuitively and I'm really trying to learn about my body and really disregard diet culture. So without further ado, here we go with the video. If you guys don't mind, I'm actually made a list on my phone to read off of. So if you see me looking down at any point in time, that's simply the reason. So number one, let your family become aware. If you are comfortable within yourself and talking to some others, let them know that you're going through an eating disorder, going through recovery, you're trying to get through Thanksgiving without getting anxious or a panic attack. Let them know that it's not help when they say, have this even though you're full, have that. Just trying to force food down your throat, just be straight up with them. Just be like, listen, I'm not comfortable with that right now, maybe later. And if they continue to nag about it, just be like, I can't, I'm sorry. Tip number two, learn to say no. This is an important tip because this, I don't know about you, but in my family, right after Thanksgiving, there's people that go straight to the gym, they go to Black Friday to run around the malls, and it's crazy. Learn to say no. This can mean if a family member is trying to give you food even though you're completely full and satisfied, make sure to say no. Be firm. Be firm. Be firm. So if people are trying to invite you to a gym to work it off, there's no reason to work it off, girl. Enjoy your cake. Number three, don't obsess. This is extremely important. Don't be obsessing about calorie numbers. Don't be obsessing about fat grams or hard points or anything like that. There's no reason to. You're here for a holiday to visit with your family, with your friends, and to be thankful. So try to enjoy in that. Number four, leave the table if things get too intense. This kind of link back to number one. I had a personal situation, not at Thanksgiving, where a certain someone decided to comment negatively about my body, about what I was eating, and how to fix it. There's nothing to fix because my body's telling me what to eat. And I had to walk away. I was pretty upset. It was a really rude thing for her to come up to me and just comment about. It was an extremely negative thing that negatively affected me for weeks. And I know people, what they say shouldn't affect you, but sometimes it does, and it's okay to recognize that. So learning to walk away, especially with triggering things like that, is a very good thing to learn how to do. For example, my family, that's like their second hobby, is diet talk. So as soon as they start talking about it at the table this year, I've already made it a mission in my head of where I'm gonna go and where I'm just gonna relax and if anybody asks I'll let them know that hey I already told you this bothers me I really didn't want to talk about it and it really bothers me and I just could not listen to it. This goes along with number four. Number five is shutting down diet talk. If you're not comfortable walking away or you're comfortable walking away and then speaking up something else you can do is shutting down diet talk. If someone says oh I'm fat so even if you are, fat is not synonymous with being ugly. That's what you're implying, right? Obviously, being fat is not a bad thing. In our society in America, there's a lot of negative connotation with it, and a lot of fat phobic people. People who are bigger are afraid to be fat and afraid to get bigger. Learning how to challenge diet talk is an extremely good thing to know and to do just in general, especially with the lifestyle that you've now chosen to recover and get back. Number six, try as hard as you can to enjoy the food, family, and friends. Really try not to let food stress you out. It is just food. It's there to be pleasurable, enjoyable, nutritious, and delicious. If it's really stressing you out, take a walk with maybe one of your friends and their dog, or maybe just sit down, breathe a little bit, maybe go into the bathroom and just use a meditation app and meditate for about five minutes. Number seven, don't restrict. Let me say it again. Do not restrict. Do not restrict. This can go from over-exercising, restricting what you eat either before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving. There's no need to do that. There is no necessary need for that. You are enjoying a holiday with family and friends for being thankful. It is definitely way easier said than done. But really, really, really don't restrict. It's gonna make things so much worse. 
You are stronger than your eating disorder and you can do this. Tip number eight is to do yoga. For me, I find if I'm a little too full, sometimes doing a little bit of yoga helps. This is not the case with everyone. You don't wanna make yourself sick. Um, I find that doing some yoga stretches either before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving really helps my digestion going. It really helps me feel not as sluggish and not as food coma-y, which is kind of miserable. I hate that feeling. And it makes me just feel, you know, alive and grateful. Number nine is stick to your original plan. Now, for people who go through anorexia, a lot of them have meal plans that they have to follow in order to ensure they are eating enough food. This is not always the case with people that go through binge eating disorder, such as myself. I'm also recovering completely by myself, so things may be slightly different. So just follow your original plan. So if you have anorexia and you have a doctor meal plan that you gotta follow, you gotta follow it. There's no altering your behavior for myself. I do food journal just to try and ensure I eat enough. Because if I get too stressed out, I'll skip like all my meals so that I will eat. And then the next day I'll binge and I'll be upset why I binge and it just doesn't make sense. If I have a food journal, then I tend to eat way better amounts and I tend to eat according to my body as well. My cats are fighting. Correct. And number 10, focus upon yourself. If the party gets too much for you, you can always leave. And if you feel like you gotta go up for another slice of cake or pie or whatever's there, then do it. You know, think about yourself during this whole experience. How am I feeling right now? Am I hungry or am I full? Have I eaten too much? Do I need to go walk outside to try and get rid of this nervous energy? Am I watching the Macy's parade? Really try to be aware and really bring this knowingness about. So anyways, I hope you liked my 10 tips for surviving Thanksgiving. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know that drill. And I will see you guys at another time. Toodles.